Godfather Minute. That was supposed to be me singing along with the music. How, how does the music go again? The, the, the our opening theme song. Yeah, yeah. Wait, isn't it? That's the real one. Yeah. But I was doing our theme song, oh, which our is theme slightly song. different, which oh, is a different, uh, different. Uh, anyway, yeah. this is the Godfather, Godfather Minute. Minute. My name is Alex Robinson, and I'm Andy Robinson, and together we are the Godfather, Godfather Minute, Minute Brothers. Brothers. Finally remembered it. Uh, this is the Godfather Minute podcast, where we go through the entire Godfather movie one minute at a time and give you some behind the scenes information, speculate. And make jokes. Mm-hmm. We do a lot of speculating. Yeah, a whole lot of speculating, <laughs> Senator. A lot of speculating. We don't talk about Cheech enough. Looking forward to exploring his character. He's more of a t- part two guy, isn't he? Yeah, he is when he testifies. I mean, he only shows up. He shows he's one of the killers at the end, right? Yeah, he is. Um, yep. I saw a movie with the actor who played. Did I ever talk about we that? We talked about okay, that. Never mind. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we should talk about Minute 51. Minute 51, but before we talk about 51, we should learn how to say it. What? A minuto. A minuto. Numero. Numero. Cinque. Close. Cinque. That's five. Mm-hmm. Good, you're remembering. Uno. And that's Cinque one. Cinque uno. Five. <laughs> before I tell you, yeah. I knew a guy who learned Spanish. So I studied abroad in Costa Rica. In Costa Rica. <laughs> studied plenty of abroad. And when I was there, there was a, a an American guy there who was just there for a few weeks, and he he didn't want to take the time to learn Spanish, and he was only there for a few weeks. So instead, he learned how to say things like uh, "to buy beer," the past. Uh-huh. So instead of learning how to say "I bought beer." Yeah. He learned the infinitive forms of the verbs, which were, because he never had to conjugate them. So right. to buy, comprar, yeah. and then beer, cerveza, en el pasado. Mm-hmm. So he didn't have to actually memorize conjugations. That's, yeah. Isn't that you're clever? Only, yeah. If you're only going to be there for a short time. Yeah. I mean, it was so awkward because he really had to think about what he was saying, but he always got his point across. Yeah. Especially because all he was doing was buying beer. <laughs> yeah. That made it a lot easier. <laughs> anyway, a minuto. A minuto. Numero. Numero. Cinquantuno. Cinquantuno. Number 50 is cinquanta. Yeah. So this is... So it's cinquanta and uno together. Cinquantuno. Cinquantuno. You got it. All right. Nice. Uh, well, minute cinquantuno starts off... Um, it's basically uh, the Turk telling uh, he has kidnapped Tom Hagen. Mm-hmm. And tells him all about the plan, how mm-hmm. he wants him to go back and tell Sonny because he was hot for the deal mm-hmm. and uh it ends with um the turk saying he's dead tom yeah that's the very last line of the minute i believe yeah oh you know what i forgot to bring this up last week when he says uh he refers to the don as your boss mm. to tom hagan mm-hmm. he does does he know that tom hagan is also kind of like a does he know that he's de- the don is just as much a father as he is to him or mikey he does. Do you think the Turk does I think know he that? has to know. Yeah, if he did Because they know, well, I'm going to read a little chunk of this minute uh, it would, that from would the book. Be, yeah. And, and Puzo wrote, wrote that Salazzo, so in this scene, Salazzo brings up Tom's background a little bit. Mm, a little okay. bit of the politics of him not being Italian, not being Sicilian. You're right. So I'm sure he did his homework. I mean, it must be known throughout the... Gang mm-hmm. land. to yeah. have a non-Sicilian as your mm-hmm. concierge, mm-hmm. And everyone would know the story. Yeah. So, uh, what do yeah. you think would have happened? I wonder what would happen to Tom if he had not. I wonder if time travel. Oh, wait, that was it was bonus content. We can't <laughs> yeah. talk about that. I wonder if Sonny had never come along and helped uh, Tom out. What do you think? Uh, I wonder mm. what would happen to old Tom Hagen. It might go a little bit something like this. <laughs> <laughs> Show cause. Uh yeah, I can't think of what he would have said as a kid. I think he would have just died young. He was, remember he had that eye infection and so all the kids shunned him. Oh, right. And his dad was dead. He was pretty much a street kid and Sonny took him home. Yeah. So I don't think he would have gone very far. Mm, without your even father. Though, even though he was smart. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, so that was in yesterday's minute. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, this minute starts off with uh, the Turk uh, telling Tom to drink it. He gives mm-hmm. them a drink. I think we discussed last week mm-hmm. what we thought was in there. Yeah. But it, it brought me to mind that uh, all the scenes that have to, there are so many scenes in The Godfather that have to do with people drinking and mm-hmm. being offered drinks. And it's always like mm-hmm. a uh, a noteworthy thing when someone's drinking in the, uh, how many, so yeah. what are some of the, what are, can you, how many of the drinking bits can you, oh, uh, boy. Can it you, sounds like a drinking game. Yeah. Kind anytime of. <laughs> someone drinks, anytime someone drinks or gets garroted, you've got to take a drink. Oh boy, that, uh, that Luca Brazzi scene, he gets a drink <laughs> and he, uh, oh, that's right. <laughs> Although he refuses to drink. Yeah. Even though it's pre-war. And pre-war scotch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He must have a good reason. So that's one. He's drinking so Clemenza there. drinking wine. Clemenza drinking pitcher. wine. Uh-huh. Uh, Fredo is drunk the first time mm-hmm. we see him at the wedding. Mm-hmm. Um, Doesn't Johnny? Oh, Don Corleone says, hey, get, get Johnny something to drink because his voice is weak. Oh, that's right. And actually, scene. the very first scene, uh, someone, I think we said it was oh, yeah. Tom or Sonny, gives Bonacero a drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, literally, this is the first thing that it ha- the first action in the movie is someone is given a drink of uh, to, to drink. So, what you're saying is all of the characters are stoned <laughs> as this movie <laughs> totally. unfolds. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe. you know, I have noticed I, several years ago, I got on a kick of watching older movies. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if this is one of those things that it was just in the movies or culturally it really was a different time. But it seems like any time a character went to another person's house, it wasn't even, can I get to a drink? Or it's what all, are you drinking? It's, yeah, it's like, yeah. What, what can I get you? Yeah. You're expected to take a drink. Yeah. I can. I think, interesting. I, I love that. I think that's great. I think that was probably accurate. Mm-hmm. I mean, people had bars in their houses, or yeah. at least one of those like carts that had all the drinks and <laughs> yeah. stuff on it. And uh, yeah, um, those were the days. Well, you, the, you never watched that days. show, Mad Men, right? I watched a few of them. Didn't didn't take. It doesn't strike me as your thing, yeah. but but that one of the things that show was famous for was that all the characters were like drinking all the time oh, yeah. like at work and everything. They were always drinking so, and smoking too. So yeah. that was a golden age. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had to, they yeah. had to live by their product, the products they were promoting. Yeah. Did true. that ever come into the story? Uh, that weren't they, didn't they do ads for cigarettes and alcohol and everything? Yeah, they did. They definitely yeah. did cigarettes. Hmm. I don't remember if they, they, they did beer, I think, mm-hmm. but I don't remember. They mm-hmm. did a lot of things over the, yeah. over the, the years. So, uh, anyway, yeah. So a lot of, so drinking is always a, uh, it's always a uh, noteworthy thing. In this scene, why do you think Salazzo says, doesn't he say drink it? Yeah. Why does he command him to drink it? Uh, well, like I, I thought it was brandy and I thought it was to keep him warm, but now that we've established that it's rye. Yeah. At least in the book. Yeah. Um, that wouldn't go with that, but they're also in the basement in the in the in a furnished basement in the book. So maybe they wouldn't be drinking rye. Maybe they'd be drinking rye in the basement, but since they're in the <laughs> cold abandoned diner, they're drinking uh, brandy. But I don't know. Yeah, drinking. If it is, do you think? I assume it's alcohol, right? Do you see him pour alcohol in it? Oh yeah, yeah. I think okay. it's alcohol. Well, we yeah. don't know what Salazzo is drinking. Right. I'm I assume, assume he's drinking the same thing. Yeah, okay, it looks like a coffee cup almost. Right. Well, that's what made me wonder if it actually was if it actually was a hot drink. Maybe they're just adding stuff. Maybe it's just like coffee with. Uh... Should, I, should I read the part out of the book? Because they talk about it. Sure. OK. This is the book. The book might be different than the movie. The book is different than the movie. No, 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 no. The book is different than the movie. The book is different than the movie. The book is different. The book is different. The book is different than the movie. Hagen's hands were shaking as he put a cigarette in his mouth. Oh, so Hagen's smoking. I think in the movie we see Hagen smoke, do we? I, well, you have to keep an eye out for it, but I that was also something everyone did in olden days. Everyone yeah. smoked all the time. I think the theme of this episode is smoking and drinking. Smoking right? and drinking. Hagen's hands were shaking as he put a cigarette in his mouth. One of the men brought a bottle of rye to the table and gave him a slug of it in a china coffee cup. Oh. Yeah, because that's what Salazzo is drinking out of, mm-hmm. looks like. Hagen drank the fiery liquid gratefully. It steadied his hands and took the weakness out of his legs. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So maybe that's what he says, drink it. I wanted to take the the, the weakness out of your legs and the <laughs> steadiness out of you. Well, I'm wondering if you want, if, if like, Salazzo may think that Hagen, like Sonny, 
maybe emotional right now. And so he wants mm-hmm. to steady him, get him thinking more clearly or relax him. Like, think this through logically. You know this is the good deal. Yeah. You've got to help broker the peace. Yeah. And it's you've got to do it for the Corleones and for me. I just it just occurred to me that it also might have a symbolic meaning because every, uh, all these scenes where uh, there's always a power play when someone is offered a drink so far mm. in in The Godfather. The first person we see is the Bonacera is given a drink from some off screen presence and mm-hmm. you know, has this drink. And then uh, Luca Brazzi is offered a drink, which he then refuses oh, as a way of kind of like. Yeah. So maybe by giving it to Tom, he's like, you know, we're. We're partners in this, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like we're we're on the same side. We shared a drink together, so like a kind of like a psychological yeah. thing. So, and you uh, know, critics tend to focus on the oranges in this movie. I think it's the alcohol. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye out for other scenes when yeah. alcohol comes into play. Champagne cocktails, champagne and, cocktails. We were just drinking in general. We have Frank Pantangeli yeah. drinking out of the hose. Yeah. <laughs> Frankie Five Angel spills the wine at the table. Oh, there you like, go. Another, and that yeah. old man said too much wine. Oh, and he <laughs> spills it. And that's symbolic that he's not on the same page as Michael. Because they remember oh. they had a disagreement about how to treat the Rosado brothers. That's right. Hmm. Well, and then, of course, uh, the banana daiquiri. And, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> they share it. And, and Fredo says, we, you know, we should, why don't we do this sooner, Mikey? Yeah. And, and Fredo also has to ask, how do you order it? Like he has to get Michael to be the one to... To to yes. yeah, help him get the drink because he doesn't know how to do it otherwise. Yes. Wow, I really like this. Uh, I really awesome. like this plan. And the culminating yeah. event in mm-hmm. the relationship of Michael and Fredo, besides his death, is the New Year's Eve party. Right. And, salud. And salud. salud. And New Year's is all about drinking. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, let me keep reading because yeah. there's some parts of you have more. No, no, I was thinking that, uh, that in the beginning of The Godfather, Fredo's the drunk one. In the beginning of Godfather 2, it's Fredo's wife that is drunk. Oh, yeah. So uh, and he can't oh, yeah. control her. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else who uses alcohol in the movie uses it effectively to control or at least make right, peace yeah. with someone else. But Fredo yeah. is not unable to do that. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Puto writes. I'm drinking more anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Doesn't the Don drink? Yeah. It's like, it's good for you, Pop. That's what Michael <laughs> says. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is Salazzo. Uh-huh. Your boss is dead, Salazzo said. He paused, surprised at the tears that sprang to Hagen's eyes. Wow. He almost looks like he's crying in the movie, right? He definitely looks uh, like he doesn't, like he's uh, ill at ease. Like he doesn't know how to react. Like I think he wants yeah. to break down but he's just like so freaked out mm-hmm. like you, know. you think jenko would have would have reacted that way i don't know being taken hostage he's an old man i don't know if that would make any difference he was a, well i mean not when not at this age right now oh you mean it's some other yeah, situation if, if jenko had been a conciliary he's a wartime conciliary so he probably would have been okay with it he wouldn't have yeah that's probably true yeah mm-hmm. um then he went on we got him outside his office in the street. As soon as I got the word, I picked you up. You have to make the peace between me and Sonny. Hagen didn't answer. He was surprised at his own grief and the feeling of desolation mixed with his fear of death. Salazzo was speaking again. Sonny was hot from my deal, right? You know it's the smart thing to do, too. Narcotics is the coming thing. There's so much money in it that everybody can get rich in a couple in just a couple of years. The Don was an old mustache Pete. His day was over, but he didn't know it. Now he's dead. Nothing can bring him back. I'm ready to make a new deal. I want you to talk to Sonny into taking it. So if you're There's Tom, a terrible Salato impression. <laughs> so I got to work on that. That's, that was pretty good. Uh, if you're Tom, do you want to take the deal at this point? <laughs> You know, well, because Tom seemed like he liked the deal too. Yeah, you know, because there's a lot of money in narcotics. We're not now, ten years from now. Yeah, and I think if it was up to Tom at that meeting, if the if the Don had said, "What do you think?" He would have said, "I think we should do it." Mm-hmm. So here, the Turk is basically agreeing with him, but yeah. it almost feels like Tom should not want to do it just out of like principle. Like you can't yeah. let him win because then that yeah. you know then he wins. So so it's a tough uh, it's yeah, a tough it's situation. Like for, and view. forcing someone to make a deal is is that yeah. really even a deal? Uh, yeah, I guess it is, but it's yeah. just not. Uh, 
Yeah. Well, it was a good, I said it before, I'm going to say it again. It was a good move on Salazzo's part. I know in the end it doesn't work out. Spoiler alert. He played it beautifully. Yeah, he did. Uh, so I forget, does Tom tell Sonny to take the deal? When he gets released and they meet in that next scene, he he encourages him to hear what Salazzo has to say. Okay, so he he, he yeah. does. That's when he says, "This is business. Yeah. It's not personal, Sonny. Yeah, the other yeah. families don't stand for a yeah. war. Well, the pop's political protection will go running for cover, <laughs> like so many nickels no. and dimes. <laughs> now, no more Salazzo games. No more Salazzo tricks. We get him now. <laughs> Let's get him while he got the muscle." <laughs> We got uh, 500 bet- button men on the street. Yeah, who little button man, Senator? <laughs> <laughs> we just we just conflated six I different know. scenes. It's like a, uh, a medley of uh, gr- <laughs> greatest hits. Uh, hot, hot, hot. He was hot for my deal, wasn't he? Uh, for some reason, that's a that that expression sounds funny. Yeah, maybe we'll name the episode that. Hot for his deal. Hot for something. deals. <laughs> Uh, and then he says that the Don was slipping. Mm. And I think it's funny that he says, could I have gotten to him 10 years ago? Yeah. When we know he got shot eight years ago. Yeah, uh, that's true. It's a good point. So uh, I wonder if those, do you think the Turk knows that? Oh, boy. Do you know the circumstance of why, when and how he was shot? No, I don't think Puto goes into it. I had in my notes that he was shot mm. in 1938 when, like we talked about, he was just he was just trying to get rid of some low-level criminals right to try to oh, or the convent yeah trying to clean up the neighborhood clean up the neighborhood <laughs> you just clean up the neighborhood yeah you know, the right doing the right thing let's just clean up the neighborhood uh so maybe he doesn't know that he was shot 10 years ago yeah well you think he would have done his homework to tell the uh, i mean it's probably common knowledge in this world in this underworld probably even in the newspapers they well, probably the- in 1938 they probably liked the story like that <laughs> although it's possible that if they if they could have covered it up Mm-hmm. then it would be in their interest to not let everyone know that the Don had been shot. That's true. You know, really if it happened and they immediately whisked him away. To the, but uh, Well, is it if you were a, a mob boss, would you rather be shot and no one know about it or be shot and have lived and have everyone know about it? Shot and then lived... Because that's but, what happened. So maybe the Don wanted that on the street. That but, you, info. but you only want that out after you're alive. Yeah. Like now, like this is exactly the worst case scenario. The Don is mm-hmm. out of commission. Yeah. That's what you don't want. You don't want everyone knowing it. And then the Don's like not around. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. It'd be great if he came out and was like, hey, guess what? I was shot. You guys didn't even know about it. <laughs> he needs a double. <laughs> Standing. He, he needs a, a he needs Luca Brazzi to make him a wax dummy. Of oh, several wax dummies. Yeah. So any people that come and visit can do you see think the Don what, is healthy and good shape. Do you think that's what the Turk meant when he said like 10 years ago, could I have gotten to him or would I have kidnapped? Would I have shot a dummy? Most likely? <laughs> yeah. I'm not talking about Fredo either. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's interesting to imagine the Don though, 10 years ago and him being, I guess, more careful and more. Well, like, but I don't know if he was more careful. I, I, Remember when he goes to visit the band leader? He personally goes to visit the band leader with Luca Brazzi and Jenko. It seems like that's kind of risky. Not that he would get shot, but he's going out and doing soldier level work. That does that has always struck me as odd. That yeah. I feel like they almost had to do that, even though even though logically it doesn't make sense. They had to do it just to establish who the Godfather was. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they had to. Oh, as the as for the writing of it, yeah, for the character, like yeah. you had to establish that the character was mm-hmm. not to be messed with. So even though it wouldn't make any sense for him to, you know, for the head of the family yeah. to be doing such, such well, a, I was gonna say it had to do with his godson, and so he it was a very personal issue. But then with Walt, he doesn't get involved. Yeah, he, he doesn't, doesn't fly away out to California. Well, I guess that was ten years ago. He's not, yeah. he's not, this, not as young as he once was. Yeah. That'd be great if he says, uh, Tom, you're going to go flying out to Hollywood later on tonight. He's like, why am I flying out to Hollywood? <laughs> well, I got this, this movie picture business with Johnny. And Tom Higgins says, well, as your conciliary, I have to tell you it's a personal matter relating to your godson. So you really should be the one to go. <laughs> Tom just doesn't want to make the trip. Yeah. <laughs> um, so do you think he... So when he says, could I have gotten to him? Do you think that means... Um, like had access to shoot him. I think so. Not like got a meet. Not 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 had a meeting with him. Oh, I didn't even thought about that. I assume it just shot him. Yeah, I assume that too. Yeah, there's a little bit more in the book about this. Can may I read? 
Yeah, but although I'm also surprised that the Don met with the Turk face to face. Yeah. That seems like something like Tom or someone else should have done and then brought it mm-hmm. to to him and then he would decide it. But I guess he said he wanted to he wanted to speak to him in person. Yeah. And, you know, so there wouldn't be any bad blood. But yeah. Anyway. So I hear what did he say? I hear you're a serious man. So we treat you with respect. I've agreed to meet with you. Yeah. Yeah. As long as your business doesn't interfere with mine. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I believe you're going to read to me. Yes. Puzo continues. Hagen stared down at his hands, not answering. Salazzo went on persuasively. The dawn was slipping. In the old days, I could never have gotten to him. The other families distrust him because he made you his conciliary, and you're not even Italian, ah. much less Sicilian. Well, so that's ever, yes. Yeah, so interesting. So maybe Tom's feeling a little guilty. About his role in this. I wonder if it's true or if the Turk is is saying that to make Tom feel bad. Yeah. Uh, That's why he gave him the drink. Yeah. He's he's like, like, drink this. Drink. <laughs> drink this. You're not going to like what I have to say. <laughs> Puto continues. This is Salazzo now. If it goes to all-out war, the Corleone family will be smashed and everybody loses, me included. I need the family political contacts more than I need the money even. <laughs> So talk to Sonny. Talk to the capo regimes. You'll save a lot of bloodshed. The capo Hagen. regimes. <laughs> yeah, that's Tessio and Clemenza. Yeah. Hagen held out his china cup for more whiskey. Hmm. It goes on, but that goes yeah. into the next minute. Yeah. But interesting, right? I thought it was a little interesting footnote that Salazzo needed the political protection more than the funding. More than the money. Because I guess yeah. anyone can give you money, that's but true. political protection is harder to come by. Yeah. Uh, and that's probably why the Don is so careful about not about because, you know, he specifically says like, oh, mm-hmm. well, my judges wouldn't be so friendly if they knew I was in this drug business. Yeah. yeah. So I guess he he knows how valuable they are. Yeah. Uh, I just have to. Do you think the Don, the Turk is telling the truth about how the other families don't trust the Don because he is a German Irish? I mean, I know that the, the whole Sicilian thing is very uh, it's really an important thing to them. Yeah. Um, I, I'm gonna say yes. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's it's. This is an earlier time too. This was an oh yeah. wasn't an integrated time. You had separate neighborhoods. Yeah, people really didn't interact much, or not, they, they interacted, but but not really in matters of business. And well, there was a lot of distrust kind of and relationship. And, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. So uh, interesting move on Don Corleone's part. Yeah, I wonder what. Well, I guess it was only after Jenko died that yeah that he became the. Uh, mm-hmm. And we've established that this is about uh, six months, probably after the wedding. Jenko died about six months because the wedding was in the summer, and this is around Christmas time. Right. Yeah. Are the other conciliaries? Are they lawyers too? I don't know. Do we do we learn anything about their conciliaries? I don't think so. It should be like a conciliary like meeting of just the (laughs) conciliaries. We joked about that in one episode. Do we really? They all go to this one pub and complain about their bosses. Yeah, (laughs) that's funny. And Tom always has to sit alone because because yeah. he's German Irish. Everyone else is drinking anisette, and he's drinking uh, whiskey and <laughs> yeah, beer. <laughs> Jameson. <laughs> um, what else you got? The Turk. It's kind of that's pretty much it. That's all that happens. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a conversation or more. Salazzo continuing to try to persuade yeah. Tom. Does Tom even speak in this minute, or is it just a monologue from the from the Turk? Really, I think it's I think it's pretty much Salazzo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Tom does say, uh, Sonny will come after you with everything he's got. Isn't yeah. that this minute? Uh, That'll be his first reaction. Sure. That's why you got to talk some sense into him. If the Tali family is behind me with all their people. I think he goes into all that. Uh, Let me look. The other New York families will go along with anything. That, um, no, I, I think we're, we're waiting into the next minute. Yeah. Because I think he just... It just ends with, he's dead. Oh, no, he does say that. The other New York families will go along with anything that will prevent a full-scale war. Let's face it, Tom. And all due respect, right. Don, rest in peace, was slipping. Ten years ago, could I have gotten to him? Well, yeah, now yeah. he's dead. And that's how it ends. End minute. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I guess next week we'll find out if anything can bring him back. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think? <laughs> will Sonny <laughs> yeah. use everything he's got to go after the Turk? Uh, so what do you rank this minute? Mm. 
it's yeah again another one of those uh, just set up minutes yeah i mean, I mean the turks in it which is yeah the turks is an interest intriguing character yeah because you don't get the impression that he's like evil necessarily mm-hmm. he's, he's not he's doing this man. for 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 personal reasons mm-hmm. he's doing it for business reasons mm-hmm. and he does seem very reasonable but yeah but you know that's what, of course so they all seem very reasonable. Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad scene. No, so I'd go two again, similar to last scene. I go two two. Mm. It's a setup scene. It's a, it's a setup. Mm. Um, it sounds like we're starting to close out the minute. Yeah, but there is uh, something I want to talk about. Uh oh. Uh, can, can we talk about cannolis? Sure. Uh oh. This is countdown time. Countdown. Guns and cannolis. He got a cold and then didn't show up to work. I thought Paulie was a good kid, but it turned out he was the stupid jerk. I'm talking about a countdown. Guns and cannoli. You won't be seeing Paulie no more. You gotta leave the gun to send a clear message, or else you might lose your life. And whatever you do, take that cannoli. Don't upset Clemenza's wife. We're working on a countdown. How many minutes left? How many minutes left? We're doing the countdown. How many minutes? That's right. Left? And for those of you that listened to last week's episode, we apologize. Right now it's it's minute fifty one, and so we really only have eight minutes left until Holly. You won't see him no more. Right. Until the gun is left. And the cannoli is taken. Uh-huh. <laughs> that was the r- original way it was phrased. <laughs> so we wanted to do a top 10 best poly scenes. That's right. That's right. We so, we, we started it last week in the bonus content. Mm-hmm. You said uh, him helping. So his ninth, and we missed the 10th one. Yeah. We just forgot that. So the ninth best poly gato scene mm-hmm. was him going out accompanying Sonny into the driveway during the wedding scene kicking the camera kicking the camera the photographer backing up Sonny when Sonny mm-hmm. loses his temper although watch the kids when you're backing up <laughs> <laughs> so number I have one for number eight okay so let's the, hear it. the eighth best polygato minute is when he says 20 30 grand and small bills cash and that little silk purse marron if this was someone else's wedding sweet tomato fortuna <laughs> I think that's classic Paulie. That's coming uh, in at number eight. I'm really impressed because I didn't think Paul even had that much. Like I, the fact that you combined all those things into mm-hmm. one ranking, mm-hmm. uh, I would have thought that that was like half of Paulie's dialogue. Oh, right there. <laughs> so I'm, that's I'm impressed that you, that whole chunk was in it. The, the small <laughs> Bill's cage, sweet tomato. That was all just in one thing. It's well, let me. Tell you there's a reason we didn't start at number ten. Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't mapped them all out, so I may have to uh, recycle some of this. <laughs> but that's it. So we got eight minutes left until the um, until min- Paulie gets his good minutes, minutes left. left. I'm doing a countdown. Eight, eight minutes, minutes left. left. And don't forget, this is also a countdown to our next countdown. That's right. We will reveal that mm-hmm. uh, at some point in the future. I think we'll reveal it on in minute fifty nine. Well, that's true. Will we debut it? Yes. Immediately after? Why not? Oh, that's going to be exciting. Yeah. Can we just skip ahead to minute 59? If we had a time travel machine, we could. Oh, save it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, All right. So do we have any uh, teaser for what we're going to talk about the bonus content today? We had some options. We had some. We asked. We are going to answer. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of those going. Uh, We talked about. I don't want to toot our own horn. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, but if the last week's, uh, I thought last week's uh, bonus content was exceptional. It's fantastic. We talked about uh, basically it was us writing, a, coming up with a plot for Godfather Four, and we introduced time travel into it, and that just got that made it go totally off the rails. Yep. So uh, that was that was fun. So what are we going to talk about this week? And, and so to give a little teaser, anyone who wants to go back and listen to the bonus content, mm-hmm. picture Fredo Corleone. <laughs> Getting his hands on a time travel machine. Right. Yeah. Think of those possibilities. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so some ideas for this afternoon's. We could talk about the the fonts that each Godfather character would use. The fonts? The fonts. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so is that that? <laughs> uh, that may be somewhat limited. 
it's a it's a it's i think it's more of a visual thing mm, okay. and this is like and if so if i'm like oh yeah it reminds me of uh, french curve number st- <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's fucking to know what uh you know so what, what we don't we have an ongoing slush pile of things that uh we do let me go back to my notes Talk amongst yourselves. Well, if you want to hear uh, this bonus content, you can go to godfatherminute.com slash support, and it'll take you to uh, where you can you know, sign up for bonus content. Currently at about a buck an episode. So and last week we had half an hour of bonus content. So basically, mm-hmm. you know, half the show was, uh, was, was bonus content. So... And uh, while Andrew continues to search, don't forget, well, you can also find us on Facebook at Fredo Corleone's Biggie Mouse Nightclub, our little chat group where we talk about the Godfather and a bunch of swell folks over there sharing funny, funny videos and stuff like that. And you can always just follow us on regular Facebook. And then we're on Twitter, too, at Godfather Minute. What I like to do is go and uh, I, I'm generally in charge of that one, and I retweet a lot of Godfather-related material. So uh, check that out. How's it going over there, bro? Going okay. So I'll give you some options. And okay. You get to pick. Okay. Well, we always have the standing headlines. Yeah, headlines from, we do every from week. The extra, extra. Mm-hmm. Godfather bonus material still being decided. He sounds like he's turning into like a young uh, Vito Andolini. Oh, there. really? <laughs> extra, extra. <laughs> extra, extra. Johnny's voice is weak. Act like a man. <laughs> now you've had your drink. <laughs> Let's go to God's guest blooper. So these are your options, Alex. Mm-hmm. Oh, and we also have the Dungeons and Dragons stats. Dungeons and Dragons right. characters. We have. Uh, we could add to the musical. The musical. We also have what the what would their talking doll say if their <laughs> lines right. come up? But so we, far, I don't think we talked about the Turk, did we? His talking doll. No, this might but, be a good opportunity. Yeah, that's true. Although we have some good Turk lines coming up. Yeah, in a couple scenes from now. Uh, so your other so your options are what Halloween costumes would the Godfather <laughs> characters wear? <laughs> very topical yeah i think we came up with that idea uh, when we first recorded it around halloween so uh we can watch the last tango in paris and criticize that oh totally <laughs> we still gotta watch the last time i know we gotta just do it we gotta let's do it, do it in the next few days and we'll we'll do it in the next couple episodes okay well, mm-hmm. we have to vow we, we can or maybe that's the bonus episode we make some guesses as to what <laughs> what the plot of the what last the plot of the last time will be <laughs> Um, we can also say who said it. We can do who said it. Oh, okay. So one of us reads a line, not okay. not in voice, and the other right. has to guess. I'm going to say, of those, I'm going to say, uh, let's go with who said it. Okay. And then we'll just throw in, you know. It's always good to have some kind of yeah. quiz or something as a as like a structure, and then we yeah. can just, you know, pile on stuff around yeah. that. So. Great. Okay. We got something to do. So we hope you'll hear us then. Until then. Leave the, the gun, gun and take, take the, the cannoli. cannoli. Eight minutes.